Working through solved example problem in a textbook and trying to take it apart as much as you can, understanding what physically is going on, is an accessory part of a learning process. Today I wanted to show you how I approach example problems in a textbook. My assistant for this video will be uh, Griffith's Electrodynamics. Let's get started. During this process, I tend to ask a lot of questions. If I can't find answers, usually the problem solution becomes not that difficult to understand, and I learn many important concepts. Now let's take a look at this example problem from the textbook I mentioned. The very first sentence here in example 8.1 made me think a lot. Go back to revise the concepts, which I didn't understand so well, and just based on this highlighted sentence, I came up with the following questions. What is current? I knew it, but the more formal definition would be more helpful. At least I felt it that way. So what does the work here? What exactly is work again? Work is being done on what? And what is dual heating? Now that's quite a few questions just for one sentence of the problem statement. And if I do the same for each of the sentences, this will take forever until I'm done studying from this problem. But I feel like answering them is essential to be able to understand the solution thoroughly. And then, next time, when a similar type of statements will show up in other problems, I won't have to go back and do this research again. I will already know the answers, and the learning process will go quicker. At least, I hope that. The more often you do it, the quicker you get at taking the problem apart. However, when you are just starting with it, I admit it's very slow. My guideline to test whether I understood something well enough to move on is this. I found this one on Instagram when I was randomly scrolling through my feed and I really liked it. In my attempt to answer my questions, I often refer to the chapters in the same textbook. It would be Griffiths for this example and I use index most of the time to find what I need in a textbook uh, or at least like to find the first mention of it in the text and see if it applies to the problem. Then I also read uh, Wikipedia pages a lot. Um, other textbooks on this subject, if I have them at hand, um, and YouTube explainer videos. However, I noticed that throughout the last school year, the third year in uni for me, I preferred to use either textbooks or Wikipedia pages for my research. I found it to be more productive, but I used YouTube a lot during my first two years of the degree. YouTube was great for visualizing some concepts or giving me some overview of the topic, which helped me narrow down the exact areas where I needed to dig deeper. Um, it also provided a great um, source of information and review material for some more like basic topics, um, like calculus series, um, linear algebra stuff. I think without YouTube, I couldn't have gone that far. YouTube was a big help for me, like as a mature student, as a returning student who had not had any math or science classes like in the past 10 years before entering school again. It was really helpful for the first couple years. But I find as the years pass on, like as I go uh, to the more advanced topics in the subjects, YouTube is often not enough. and Textbooks are most of the time more informative and also teach you a good skill. Um, I don't know how to explain it properly, maybe I'll try in another video, but really I find that the textbooks at this point are more helpful and I enjoy the process more than just watching um, YouTube videos because I have more control and I can... Um, really dig as deep as I want to. So now let's go back to the example to show you exactly the process I go through. So let's say in this particular example the concept of dual heating was the least known to me. So I started my research with that. Looking in the index I identified the page where it first came up in the textbook. It was page 301 in Griffiths. Reading this last paragraph here immediately answers at least two of my questions above. The electric force does the work here, and the work is being done on the charges. 
And I could go deeper here and ask myself where the electric field comes from, like, you know, the one that's created by all the charges in the wire and outside it maybe too, if there are any. I tried to answer this question since I did not have to look for an answer because I knew it. But it is not essential to know it accurately to solve this problem, so I could have skipped it. It's up to you guys how deep you want to dig. And I believe it takes time to learn to identify the essential questions and the ones that are not essential for solving the problem. Okay, that's the start. But I still don't know what the dual heating is or what, is, uh, what it is referring to. Then I'm asking myself again, what is work? From my classical thermodynamics class last semester, I remember that this was defined very well in the textbook. I even still remember the exact place where this was in the text. You guys, I took this class very seriously. Okay. So what stood out to me and what was very illuminating is the statement about work and heat, both being forms of energy transfer. The difference is work is the energy transfer um, to a system by change in external parameters, such as volume, electric field, or gravitational potential. And the heat is the transfer of energy to a system by thermal contact. So keep that in mind as you follow through this um, video. So mathematically, work is defined as the force times the distance over the which the work is done. I remember that, and mathematically it looks like this. There we have it. The electric field transfers some of its energy to the charges when pushing and pulling on them. By doing so, the charged particle or the charge is moving. Therefore, electric force does the work on the charge. By analogy, just as you would transfer some of your energy to a box that you are pushing or pulling, for example, you would be doing that work on the box. So remembering that the electric force is defined as the follows. We have also the expression for the force. But we also know that the charges may collide when they move inside the wire, since some of them experience attractive force exerted by electric field and some repulsive force. During such collisions, some energy is released, which was earlier acquired by these colliding charges from the work done on them by the electric field. So basically, electric field transferred some of its energy through the work onto this charges. And so now that the charges, when they collide, this energy is released in form of the heat. Why heat? And recall the definition of the heat. It's the transfer of energy to the system by the thermal contact. So because from the thermodynamics definition of work and heat, the energy transfer happened through the thermal contact. Collision equals brief thermal contact. That's why the book is saying that some of the work is converted into heat. And so this process can go on and on until you're done with the problem um, statement or the problem solution, uh, whichever applies. I just tried to explain the physical processes behind the highlighted first sentence in example 8.1. And the last paragraph on the page 301 in Griffiths helped me to find some answers so that now I can move on in the problem. However, reading further on the same page, another sentence caught my attention, and I wanted to figure out why the author made this statement. So this yellow highlighted statement or sentence uh, puzzled me, and I decided to um, spend another five to 10 minutes trying to convert into its mathematical equivalent and try to find out where it came from. So I created a post about it on my Instagram account, by the way, so there you can um, have, um, you can see all the slides that I created to explain this. Uh, I'll just put them uh, one after another here in the video as the slideshow basically because I don't want to make the video too long, but uh, you can check out my Instagram post um, on this particular statement if you like. So anyway, I think I will stop here for this video. The goal was not to show you the complete solution of the example, 8.1, but just the process of taking the problem apart and trying to understand it. So thanks for watching, folks. I hope it was at least a bit helpful. And if so, please don't forget to give it a like to let me know. And thank you, and I'll see you next time.